C. Uh, we need to report on uh, a report of the invariant existence on the basis of the already and the according to the rules and and then there. Sorry, I have my handwriting. C. The report of the invariant existence on the basis of the already and according to the rule to the rules still more of a term still not yet transverse. Transverse. Right. Um, <clears throat> so. Well, okay, to a certain extent. So let's go back to the add one, uh, just for a moment. So one add one, two, two add one, three, three add one, four, etc. I, I could uh, do this count, but here, here's the thing, is there's an invariant existence, which is the number 1,000, right? You'll notice my count has not reached 1,000, but I can posit this as an invariant existence, which, dem or, uh, which shows the still more in which to be traversed. Well, of course, then I can pose, oh, well, then, well, okay, then I can count 999, and then 1,000, well then 1,001, and then 10,000, and then a million, right? There's this endless set of invariants of this still more to be counted, right? No matter how far I count, there is this still more to be counted. Um, this rule actually, to a certain extent, gets dropped out in its later, more rigorous formulation, but there's something to replace it, which becomes D. Uh, so is there any immediate question on this? Uh, D, a second existent uh, which acts as the cause of failure of the process. Um, so in any case, uh, or the procedure of exhaustion, it is the multiple which is supposed as such the still more iterates inside of it. Now that's really important, inside of it. Um, so it's not simply that there is a number outside, right? Because the failure of, you know, the count of three or four or five doesn't necessarily entail the failure or, or inside the, fa uh, the failure of a, a thousand or a million, right? Because every single additional number adds to it so that the failure, uh, you know, is continuing and infinite, right? The failure to complete. So, uh, as we'll see in just a second, this is the necessity of a limit ordinal. Um, and so we'll, we'll get into the ontological decision in Meditation 14, unless there's any more questions about this particular section. Okay, so 14, um, the ontological decision that there is uh, some infinity in natural multiples. One cannot simply assert through an axiom, so one cannot simply, it's you know not just that, uh, assert that there is an, in, uh, an infinity. Um, uh, rather, what it has to uh, what has to occur is there needs to be types of normal multiplicity which are decided. So I can't just say, oh, it's infinite because it goes on forever, right? That is an axiom, or there is some multiple that goes on forever. That axiom doesn't make sense, or is not coherent, and the reason why is because it's circular, right? What it means to be infinite is to go on forever. So what needs to be asserted in ontology itself is that there are two, uh, ironically, two types of normal multiplicities. One that it continues infinitely and one that does not, um, i.e. this will become the first is the successor or is already the successor, oh no, becomes the successor, and then the next becomes the limit ordinal, right? So this, so this reframes the question, the axiomatic decision about infinity. It is not about some vague notion of continuing on forever or the process itself, right? So keep your eyes open later for the axiom of infinity and what it actually deals with. So moving on to one, the point of being and the operator of the passage. So Badu lays out the conditions for the infinite and the initial point of it being the void. So basically here Badu is going through a rigorous analysis. So what we have for our initial point is the point of the void. Uh, from the void, uh, Badu poses the following procedure for the count. So basically, what you do is you take the singleton of the void. And so this allows for a pair of AB. Now, through the axiom of replacement, uh, you can create any AB set, right? If you have a singleton of the void, void and a set of the void. Through the axiom of replacement, any other sing or, uh, multiple can replace the A or the B, and it will remain a set. So does that make sense? Okay, so then what we have is we have the union of A and B, which can either be A union B, 
or the union as a relation of AB, which allows for the quote unquote ascending process of A uh, union set of A. Um, and this is again the ordinal formed by this uh, union is known as a successor. Now, the reason why it's known as a successor is because we have a set A where the a minimal element is introduced into it, which is the name of A itself. So A is one set, the set of A is another set, and what we have is the union of these two sets. So essentially we have A along with the, uh, the name of A, right? And this can be continued off, you know, A to A prime, to A, uh, uh, a double prime, A triple prime, uh, so on and so forth, right? This process of taking the singleton of a set can be done infinitely, um, which Badu says. And uh, he also points out that no additional set ex exists between successors because the successors have only a single element difference, which is the name of the first set itself. So there's no way to insert another element into a successor because the difference, right, by the axiom of uh, extension that uh, makes them different and not the same is one element. And that one element is the name itself, right, which is the minimal difference between a set and its successor. So, solid. Okay, so uh, this endless limit does not entail, and this is an important point, this endless limit, endless amount of union, right, of successors, does not entail infinity as such because there's no existential seal, right? We don't know that it's infinite, uh, you know, if I want to be overly constructivist about it, because we never reached the end of it, right? And there's no, at this point, logical justification <coughs> for, uh, for asserting or inferring or deducing that there is some ordinal which then uh, includes this infinite set. So what do we need to do? We need to find out what possibilities or conditions of the infinite are through the second existential seal, right? What is the halting point of the infinite? So, this, uh, lead, are there any questions or comments on that section? Okay, we're going to go into secession and, or succession, sorry, the south will not rise again. Um, succession and limit. Badu rigorously lays out what constitutes a successor. So what we have is we have the successor of alpha, alpha, if and only if there exists some beta such that alpha is equal to the successor of beta. So what does this mean? Uh, it means that basically um, to have a successor means that there exists something that is essentially the minimal difference of a set that is the set of beta that is A. S here means successor of. Successor of B. SC means is a successor. Is a right? successor. So alpha is a successor if and only if there exists a beta such that alpha equals the successor of beta. Right, which is that, that minimal difference. Right. Of beta included in the name. Right. Also, I forgot to include them. This is nothing more than a definition of what it is to be a successor. Right. Um, now, but what you'll notice is this also entails that it's equal to um, the successor of beta. Or, uh, yeah. Um, now, what that means is it, it can't. There are plenty of ordinals which include other ordinals which are not the successor, right? Which are not simply the union of that set and the name. And this should be obvious, right? Um, one is not, uh, or a hundred is not the successor of one, right? It is not the simply simple inclusion of one more. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So. Um, he also defines a limit ordinal, uh, which is not a successor. And this is where things get real. Use the other marker. I, no, this is the good one. Yeah, this is the good one. Use, Use the real one. orange marker. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. 
So let's look at our limit ordinal here. Limit of A. Okay, so a limit ordinal uh, is a limit ordinal if and only if it is not a, uh, a successor of A, which also means if and only if there does not exist a B such that A is 